here with champion jockey uh, Joe Marrera in just his second season here in Hong Kong. Joe, looking back at the season, firstly, congratulations, 139 winners already with two meetings to go. Um, it's been a remarkable year for you. Oh, thanks, Clint. Yeah. yeah, it has been a fantastic season for me. I'm delighted with how things went. I understand it was your second season in Singapore as well where you broke the record. You haven't broken the record uh, here this year. You've absolutely smashed it. Um, so that must be, it will, you must feel an amazing sense of achievement through that. Uh, yes. Uh, honestly, I didn't think those kind of things would be happening in, in my career here in Hong Kong. Obviously, I was wishing to do well when I decided to move to Singapore, where I was doing extremely well as also. But um, fortunately, when I got here right away, I was able to get some really good support from trainers. And from there on, I was able to get on some really good horses. And the way how things went was really unexpected. Uh, I understand um, just Armand Lee and, and Sean Woods are the two stables which you haven't had a winner for. So, I mean, really, even though you know, you've, had a lot of, you've had great support from a number of different trainers. Yes, unfortunately I haven't ridden winners for those two trainers yet, but I'm aiming and I hopefully I can get winners out of their horses. Um, but once again, it's all about the, the support that I've got. Without the support that I had from the trainers and owners, I wouldn't be able to be winning as many, as many races. So, yeah, obviously I want to say thanks to them all. Yeah, and of course, I mean, the two trainers, it looks like John Moore will probably win now. Uh, this season, but uh, both John Moore and John Size, you've had a lot to do with both stables and, and they've both enjoyed great success themselves this year. Yeah, two outstanding trainers, people that I'm learning a lot from, people that I appreciate all the support that they gave me and I'm looking forward to be associated with them throughout of next season as well and obviously f for as long as we can. Um, whoever wins will definitely be deserving to win because they're working pretty hard both very successful trainers who really knows what horses are about, really prepare their horses very well, and I wish we'll get the, we'll get the best, find the luck. It's been an amazing season for you too, in, in, in the highest level in all the big races. Um, let's, let's hark back to International Day, and you won two of the four races, Able Friend Designs on Road, amazing feeling. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, I, I can't forget that, that feeling. Able friend from last has put play to them quickly. Gold fun resiliently battling on for second, but able friend bolts up for Joe Marrera. Designs on Rome the outside. He's in for the fight. Well, they hit the line at Designs on Rome beat him. Designs on Rome got up to beat military attack. Great finish. There was a little bit of story behind that, those winners, like obviously able friend after winning the leading up race for the international. I was going to be able to ride him on that race and we knew that if he brings the same form he would be hard to beat and he did it. But Designs on Rome was a horse that didn't win the leading up race, he ran fifth. And there was a big chance of Tommy Berry who won the derby, some other big race with him, come from Australia to ride him on the international. So I did have to work pretty hard on the phone and try to really convince them that I deserved to stay on for another run on the horse as we, as we knew um, on the leading up race he was just getting ready for the for the big one and we knew he was going to be 100% ready for the international which he was fantastic race where he just got there on the line fighting with another really good horse from Hong Kong and obviously some other international horse that came in and that was unforgettable race that I won I was delighted after winning that one in particular interesting what you say about designs on Rome because it did take you a little while to sort of seemingly extract the best out of him, albeit he might not have been fully ready. Um, but obviously, Joe, you know, a couple of starts there where on the lead-ups he, he arguably didn't quite perform up to his best. He, he didn't quite perform and I didn't know him that well also, Clint. Uh, I took maybe two runs to get to know him better. And once we went for the international race, knowing him a little bit better and him also better prepared. Um, he just put on a good game, the best of himself, and he won it. It was fantastic the way how he made it. And I'm sure we made a couple of people that he was involved into his preparation be very well emotioned. 
also uh, looking forward, just briefly we'll talk a, a little bit about, and it's a trend that seems to be happening a lot more now, I mean, Zach Pert has been travelling a lot this year, I think Douglas White's been travelling a lot more overseas, and he had some overseas Group 1 success as well with Brazen Bow, that must have been a thrill. Yeah, fantastic. That horse is definitely one of the best sprinters that I have set on top. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be on him on his last run in England, where he ran a huge race. Uh, what, the kind of feeling that he gave me is that he's really talented. He has everything that you wish and you dream a horse to have. Like, he's pretty calm, pretty straightforward, does everything right. And then when he's feeling good and he's at his best, put on a good show. His last win with me in Melbourne was very impressive, the way how he won. And uh, obviously uh, I should say thanks to the connection who gave me the opportunity to go over and uh, sit on top of him. Um, for the future, I really hope that I can go over more often and ride some international, and hopefully we can get some international horse from Hong Kong overseas, and not just go and do well, because I know representing Hong Kong is a big thing, and. I, I believe we do have some really good horses to do well oversee the result in the past has show it and I'm really looking forward for next season also Clint because I know if I can just keep the same the same way things will go very very well again. There haven't been too many low lights in the season for Joe Marrera, but one of them obviously that we have to we have to bring up able friend in England. Um, he just didn't turn up, did he? No, he he wasn't the same horse, unfortunately. Um, I know they, they were quite happy the way how he was taking it by the way through to the race. But when it comes to the race time, he was very nervous, he was sweating quite a lot and just didn't enjoy being out there with them. Definitely didn't bring the, 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 the best of himself. And, but as I said to the owners, to the, to the trainer, um, I'm not disappointed with him. What he's done with me before, I was delighted. And uh, wherever he goes, uh, if they want me on board, I still want to be because he's a real champion and he should be winning some more big races all, throughout uh, of his career. Yeah, we look forward to, to seeing him back next season. Talking of next season, Joe, it's hard for you to set a sort of well, what are your goals next season? I mean, you've ridden 139 with two meetings to go, so you probably end up in the mid 140, something like that. What's Joe Marrera's goals for the next season? My goal is just keep up the same rhythm. I don't want to slow down. I'm very happy the way how things are going. Um, if I can start off well and be right there fighting for the Premiership, I know, I, I know that a couple of new jockeys are coming to make the competition be even more competitive. But whatever, I know my chances is there and I'll definitely be working very hard to try to win as many races as possible. How do you see those new riders coming and impacting you? Because one of the real advantages you had this season, Joe, was you know you could ride light and amongst with Karras probably riding light. But it'll, it'll, different dynamic next season. Uh, we've got Chad Schofield coming in and, and Richard Fury. They both ride light too. So it might be a little bit more competitive in the lighter ranks. Yeah, that will be competitive to me, but it's going to be to everyone else also because they'll be picking up not just the light rides, right. some of the top weight horses as well. But uh, you know, Clint, when you decide to move to Hong Kong, you're going to expect that because whatever the club wants competition to be as strong as possible, they want the race out there to be very competitive and they're achieving that. So um, they probably want it to be even more. So whatever who comes will be very much welcome into the game and obviously they have to expect, they have to expect that the competition will be tough from everywhere that, that is here. And talking of competitive race riding, you, you must be happier this season. Obviously, your rookie season here, spent a lot of time on the sidelines. You probably could have gone close to winning in your first season riding here, but it seems to touch wood be, I've gone a bit better for you this time. Yes, fortunately, I, I, I adjust myself a little bit the way how the Hong Kong races plays out. Uh, as you mentioned, last season was unfortunately a bit on the sideline for being not pretty much straight. Uh, the stewards over here are pretty straightforward. If you commit any offence, they are going to find you guilty. And I'm not saying they've done wrong. I'm just saying that unfortunately I was out for not being straightforward. But this season has been much better and hopefully I can carry on the same way towards next season.